Hello everyone, today I'll tell you how to build attribute-based encryption for Turing machines from the general assumption of identity-based encryption in the bounded collision model. This is a joint work with Ridwan and Brent. So let's start by talking about attribute-based encryption. The notion of attribute-based encryption was originally defined in 2005 and is a powerful generalization of public encryption which allows fine-grained access over encrypted data. It can be understood via the following example. Suppose we have two parties, Alice and Bob. Bob has some secret key, Alice has a, a public key, and Alice wants to encrypt the message, the sometimes of data M, and a set of attributes such that anybody who satisfies these attributes should be able to recover the message M from the encrypted data. So Alice creates this particular self text, and now there's a third party, Charlie, and Charlie wants to recover this message M whenever its policy F satisfies the underlying attribute. So if F attribute is equal to one, it wants to recover the message M. Now, one way to solve this problem is Charlie can simply send the SAF text over to Bob and prove that I'm authorized to decrypt it, that it is authorized to decrypt it. And Bob will decrypt the SAF text and give back uh, Charlie the encrypted message if Charlie satisfies the attributes. While this is great, it's very inefficient and it's suboptimal. And to be based encryption provides a brilliant way of solving this problem in which attribute based encryption says, Bob can actually create some partial secret keys called predicate keys for the function f corresponding to Charlie, such that using the secret key skf, the Charlie can decrypt the self text as long as it is authorized to decrypt it, as long as f of attribute is equal to one. Basically, attribute based encryption provides fine grained access over the encrypted data, and it solves this problem without outsourcing the computation to Bob. And even it lets Charlie perform this computation when Bob is offline. Now, syntactically, attribute based encryption can be understood as follows. We have four algorithms. The setup algorithm samples a pair of master public and master secret key. Using the master public key, anybody can encrypt the message M under a set of attributes. And using the master secret key, anybody can create a, a functional secret key or a predicate secret key for any function F, such that combining the secret key and the ciphertext, one can recover the message M, the encrypted value, <clears throat> as long as the, uh, the policy satisfies the underlying attributes encrypted inside the self text. Now, naturally for security, the idea is as follows. Suppose I give you a self text that encrypts a message and under a set of attributes. And you also have polynomially many secret keys for different functions, for many different functions, F1, F2, up to FQ. Now, attribute based encryption says the message M that was encrypted will be hidden as long as all the policies that you have for uh, basically all the policies for which you have a secret key for. None of those policies satisfies the attributes because if some of the policies satisfies the attributes, then you can run the decryption algorithm and recover the message M. But if you don't have any of the authorized secret keys, any of the accepting secret keys, then the message M should be hidden from you. And this is, uh, gives extreme power of fine-grained access of encrypted data because now you can provide uh, partial secret keys, but also guarantee security in presence of re revealing certain partial secret keys. Now, attribute based encryption has been studied in two different models of computation for specifying the policy functions. So typically, the policy function can be specified either using a non-uniform computation class, such as Boolean formulas or circuits, or using uniform functions such as, or the uniform class, such as deterministic finite automatons, Turing machines, RAM uh, computation, and so on. And the point is that in the uniform class of policies, the attributes that the policy circuit is going, or the policy function is going to a read, it's going to be fixed. It's going to be a priori fixed. Whereas in the uniform class, we can actually handle an unbounded length of attributes. And uniform classes are much more uh, uh, are much more useful for practical applications. So basically, the main difference between these two models of computation for specifying the policies for secret keys is that we need a separate key for non-uniform uh, models because we have to specify a separate key for each different length of the attributes. Whereas in uniform classes, you specify a single secret key and that can handle all unbound length attributes. So uniform classes seem much more useful for practical applications, such as uh, suppose you have to give out a secret key in practice where uh, the person has to perform a, a, a firewall check. And uh, in that case, you have to read a regular expression. And depending upon the regular expression, you read it. And if your the regular expression satisfies your predicate, then you can actually decrypt the message. And there could be plenty many applications in which uniform models are much more useful in practice. 
So despite, uh, or no, I should not say despite, but with all great progress in, uh, um, uh, in the literature, we have amazing results for building attribute-based encryption in the non-uniform as well as the uniform model from a wide variety of assumptions such as binary maps, learning with errors, multi maps, and so on. But with all this progress, we've seen that there is one commonality in all these results. They need specific algebraic assumptions to sort of build the most powerful notion of attribute-based encryption. And further, there is a large gap of feasibilities between, uh, for same assumptions between the two models. The class of policies that we can actually uh, encrypt or we can give secret keys for in the non-uniform model, they are much more expressive. We can basically uh, build attribute-based encryption for all circuits from learning with errors, for NCM from bilinear maps, and for all circuits again from multilinear maps. Whereas in the uniform model, we still do not have the best known, the best possible results, such as for Turing machines, from standard assumptions such as bilinear maps and learning with errors. And in this work, we uh, study whether we can actually close the gap between the uniform and non-uniform model, and do we al always need specific algebraic assumptions? So the question is concentration is that, is there always a gap? And can we actually use general assumptions to build, uh, uh, to build uh, attribute based intuition for non-uniform models? So in this work, we proved the following issue. We built an attribute-based encryption scheme for the uniform model feeding machines from identity-based encryption in the bound collision model. And just to summarize, we proved two theorems in this work. We show that we provide a scheme that is non-adaptively secure against Q collisions, where Q is an a priori fixed uh, uh, parameter of the system from identity-based encryption. And we also show that this can be upgraded to adaptive security in the random oracle model. And one caveat of reconstruction is that although the encryption algorithm can handle unbounded length, uh, 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 unbounded length attributes, and a single secret key can work for unbounded length attributes, the encryption algorithm still needs to dictate or just still needs to sort of uh, 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 give out or decide or fix the, the running time of the Turing machine. So the, the Turing machine that is going to eventually be run on the word or the attribute that's encrypted inside this half text, that has to be decided at encryption time. Now, uh, as, a, uh, as, a, uh, as a side application, we were actually also able to improve the notion of garble rams, and we were able to build garble rams, which much more fine-grained simulation security, as uh, it was crucial in improving security of our attribute-based encryption system. Now, just to understand the result a little bit better, in the bounded collusion model, so, so this is the basically the attribute based encryption security requirement, which you say get polynomial number of secret keys and you should still be able to get security. Bounded collusion model says that security holds as long as you have at most Q collisions. So if you don't have more than Q keys, then the security holds. But if you have more than that, then uh, there are no more guarantees. And Q is basically an a priori fixed parameter of the scheme itself. And uh, although bounded collision is uh, restricted, is a, is, is, is a weaker notion of security than say collision resistant or fully collision resistant security for attribute-based encryption, attribute-based encryption bound collision security has already seen a lot of practical applications. And the landscape in bound collision model looks as follows. For the non-uniform models, we already have attribute-based encryption for circuits from just public encryption, from basically the minimal assumption. But all prior constructions for uniform models, even in the bound collusion uh, setting, they require specific algebraic assumptions such as learning with errors in most cases. And in this work, we show that algebra is not unit for uniform models as well. So we close the gap between non-uniform and uniform models, at least in the bound collusion setting. And a very high level overview of construction in three steps. It's basically, the first step is we try to build an attribute-based encryption in which we can only corrupt one key, only single key corruption. So one, bound, one size collision bound. Then we show how to go from single key corruption to bound key corruption. And finally, we show how to actually also upgrade uh, non-adaptive security to adaptive security via the random oracle model. Now, the step two is follows via standard combinatorial tricks that are commonly used in the, in the literature. And the step three, it relies on simple non-committing encryption that we were able to prove security under the random oracle model. We were able to show how to upgrade non-adaptive security generically using to, uh, to adaptive security. 
using this non-committing encryption scheme. And I invite you to look at the paper for more details. Now, the first part of the paper or this first step is where most of the technical ideas uh, uh, came in, most of the new technical ideas came in. We'll be able to show how to use identity-based encryption to build AV for Turing machines with just single key corruption. Oh, okay, sorry. So at a very high level, the, uh, the, uh, the overview is as follows. To encrypt an attribute for a particular time bounty, because this is decided during encryption, the ciphertext is going to consist of T goblings. I'm going to talk about what goblings mean in the next time, but T goblings. And basically the ith goblin, you align these goblings from one, two, three, up to sequentially up to T steps. And the ith goblin is going to perform the ith Turing machine computation step on this particular attribute. And basically the ith goblin is going to not only perform this computation, but it's going to output the labels for the next goblin step. And these labels are going to be interpreted under the identities corresponding to the Turing machine trans state transitions. So the tra state uh, transition that you're going to perform between I and I plus one steps, that's going to dictate what particular labels can you decrypt. And each secret key is going to be identity keys for appropriate Turing machine state transitions. So using state transitions, you basically encrypt, decrypt the labels, you perform the gobbling evaluation, that's going to give you an encrypted set of labels and you again decrypt these labels and just can keep on continuing that. Eventually, you basically either learn the message M from the fine gobble circuit or nothing if you're not authorized. And the type of gobbling we need is that it turns out gobbling, gobble circuits are sufficient, but it leads to quadratic blow up in the ciphertext size because we have to feed in the entire Turing machine state to the entire gobble circuit at each step. But we notice that if we use gobble ramps, then we can make it to just linear and not just have this quadratic blow up in the ciphertext size. And gobble ramps are uh, a strengthening of gobble circuits where gobble ramp says you can have a persistent memory that can be reused across a bunch of gobble ramp programs. And you can gobble all these ramp programs independently for this particular memory. And in this work, we provide a new security property for GobbleGram. Typically in standard model, in the standard security, all the programs were simulated together jointly in GobbleGram. But in this work, we show that uh, if the GobbleGram programs, uh, Gobble programs can be uh, simulated iteratively, sequentially, then that also has interesting applications as we show this work. And we show um, that uh, prior constructions for gobble ramp are already secure uh, in uh, were already secure uh, in this iterative simulation security model. And as I said, this is necessary for our proof as we have to simulate our gobble uh, ramp sequentially in our construction. And I invite you to look at paper for details about how we execute all these ideas. And I'll quickly conclude by saying that. In this work, we propose so we build an attribute-based encryption scheme for Turing machines for this uniform model of Turing machines from the general of assumption of identity-based encryption in the bound collision model, thereby closing this gap. And we prove adaptive security in the random oracle model and non-adaptive security in the standard model. And as I said, it's uniform model and general assumptions of identity-based encryption. And we also show a new fine-grained simulation security property for gobble ramp, which might see more applications down the line and uh, some new directions for future work. So a natural question could be, can we actually close the gap even further? Can we build functional encryption for Turing machines in the bound collision model? And can we remove this time bound that we had in an encryption algorithm? And what about adaptive security without random oracle model? And recently there has been some interesting work which has proposed uh, uh, the, which has strengthened the collision model, collision model to the dynamic collision model. And the question could be, can we actually strengthen attribute-based description for dealing machines in the dynamic collision model as well? And with that, I would like to conclude and thank you for listening. Please send me an email for uh, if you have any more questions.